Usually we do see people voting on the side of Method Black, but this time around, there is a team that has been dominant for a long time that has found their stride with Morrow on the new roster. Wildcard Gaming looking to take down Method yet again. We've got drama before the Grand Finals. Now we've got the action. A best of seven to decide the champion of Europe's Cup number two. The winner of this gets the King's share of the points to qualify to the Spring Land later this year. Raikou already under huge fire by the team of Wildcard Gaming. Chaz has showcased multiple healers throughout this tournament with Paladin Druid and Shaman under his belt and now Mistweaver, but is perhaps he spreading himself too thin? It's definitely a possibility, but Chaz has shown that he's just so competent on all of these healers in these series, does an excellent job, but I don't know if this was necessarily the best pick. I don't know how this exactly is going to work out. Chaz maybe isn't going to have to sneak away for drinks as often. One of the good things about the Mistweaver monk is you have this moment where you can push in with your paralysis for a four second crowd control and you can follow it up with a leg sweep. That means you get a nice little nine second CC about every minute that Chaz can help his team out and try to find some burst kills. Well, then he's actually gonna be opting into Relentless to reduce some of that crowd control and try to keep his live during those scary moments. Good trades here from both teams early on. I would say that Chaz is slightly behind here without that Gladiator's Medallion. If he tries to move across the map aggressively, he could be exposed to crowd control. And also, he is susceptible to the Root Solar Beam. I really think that Chaz may have opted to go for Gnome, and that might have been a better option to counteract that combination of crowd control. Of course, he does have Raikou, who has reverse magic. He can then duck around and remove that Root effect so that Chaz can escape the silence of the Solar Beam's sector. Z in midfield setting up for huge damage here off the back of that primal elemental towards Raikou but Chaz already lining up big heels and completely negates it I do believe now with I-beam rolling no nice lightning lasso on the I-beam denying a couple of attacks and trying to sneak in a kill just not enough however if we move into dampening a situation like that is going to net them a kill yeah, and I, I honestly wonder why Method Black didn't just opt to go for the mirror in this matchup. Maybe they know something we don't, but so far, this hasn't been looking too great for them. Chaz is going to be susceptible to the hexes coming in from Zipa, whereas before on the rest of Druid, he could get into bear form or travel form or cat form and try to avoid those if he needed to. Now, if Chaz misplays just a little bit, Zipa is going to be able to take advantage of that extra crowd control. Looney completely full on mana right now. Lightning Lasso is going to be used in that. It's such a powerful ability Zipai has. It's a channeled stun as well as channeled damage on a target. So we have to see swaps in Raikou break that up by either trinketing or getting interrupts on it as soon as possible. Eventually, that Solar Beam Lightning Lasso is going to get uh, Wildcard Gaming a kill because Raikou cannot use Reverse Magic in a Lightning Lasso and Chaz can't heal him in a Root Solar Beam. So with Crowd Control applied to two members at the same time, they can remove all potential for Method Black to recover in the fight. And because this is a blind pick, it will give the winner a swing match advantage for the rest of the series all the way back to Game 7. Wildcard Gaming just seemed to be a step ahead in the current meta over method black and i'm wondering what they're gonna do for the rest of this fight mana is still equal but they would like to try and get a lead deeper into dampening swaps even becomes a target he's trying to tunnel down z pi maybe split some pressure try and force looney to heal multiple targets and expend more mana but i don't think it's looking too hot for method black uh, so far it hasn't been looking good Chaz just hasn't been able to push in and get the cc that he needs he does sit down and drink and here's one of the things about the mistweaver monks is although early on we kind of talked about how powerful the counteract magic honor talent was which empowers your renewing mist if anyone has a magic uh, damage over time effect on them that's very strong early on but later on that healing just isn't enough to sustain and that's when you have to start using the enveloping mists and the vivify the more expensive heals that the mistweaver monk have available to actually keep your team alive but chaz so far i think he actually sat down for a drink there managed to get full mana back and now method black is actually looking quite good and they have a mana lead if they can sustain this i could see them winning the game looney trying to retreat from raikou zipai trying to back him up with counter pressure I do like Looney's positioning, running back and forth in the open field. That's quite effective when you are playing with two ranged casters against two melee classes so that you can just expose them to huge damage and crowd control. While Chaz tried to cross midfield, he was susceptible and got caught in a hex. 
now leading towards damage onto Swapsy, forcing a trade on defensive cooldowns. Looney is creating these situations by running back and forth across the open field on the map. If you're a healer at home wondering how to deal with a situation such as this, facing a Death Knight, a Demon Hunter, and any other combination of melee classes, you definitely want to be following along with Looney's positioning because he is playing it immaculately. Yep, doing an excellent job. It basically just forces Raku and Swapsy into the open, and that way Morrow and Zipai can really punish these melee classes that don't have as much mobility to chase Looney. Looney sitting in bear form right now, trying to tank through some of this damage. Mana Rift gets dropped out. Raikou doing a good job so far in the game, landing these onto Looney. Already down to 50% mana. Swapsy getting a little bit low. This could be the Life Cocoon from Chaz, who will probably opt to just toss that out as soon as possible, actually having to trinket out of that Cyclone. Nicely done by Morrow. Good bash as well on to Chaz, forcing out a lot of defensive cooldowns. I still think that Chaz should be playing Gnome. Even with access to reverse magic, it's not reliable as Raikou could be crowd controlled during that moment. And I do think it is going to net wildcard gaming a kill. Now, while Mistweaver is effective against Balance Root and Elemental Shaman, you need to be playing Gnome. Otherwise, you can't deal with that Root Solar Beam. Chaz is trying to cross the field to reconvene with Raikou on the opposite side. But while he's doing that, Looney is on the opposite side of the map, sitting down casually drinking, regenerating his mana to a significant level lead now over Chaz as dampening has just begun and continues to reduce the incoming healing of both sides. Now Raikou was the burst target before dampening, but in dampening the Death Knight becomes exposed because Death Strike is significantly weaker, so Swapsy is going to have to take note of that and prepare. Yeah, it's going to be coming scary for both of these teams. Method Black getting lower, stun onto Swapsy, can they take him down? No, anti-magic shell will be enough. A large Death Strike as well heals Swapsy up to a healthy amount. Zipai in midfield taking a little bit of damage. Looney, mana not doing terrific right now. Has been finding some moments to drink, but Raikou with the spectral sh sight of the Demon Hider. Demon Hunter should be able to chase him down, find him in stealth, and that's going to limit the opportunities that Looney has to actually sit down and drink. Yeah, good usage of that spectral sight by Raikou, and now Chaz has a significant mana lead, but this Death Knight is slowly but surely becoming a liability in the fight, constantly getting bursted down in that lightning lasso star surge combination that we are talking about earlier on. Definitely, if you're looking to play this composition that Wildcard Gaming has played, you want to become combining those two spells, the lightning lasso of the Elemental Shaman and the star surge of the Balanced Druid, and you can communicate that to your teammate. I'm going to go for a lightning lasso, and then your Balanced Druid partner can trade in some star surges and really hammered down a huge burst opportunity. Zebai has been getting a lot of hexes and it's been putting his team quite far ahead as Chaz cannot heal while sitting in that frog form. Swapsy gets bursted again deeper into dampening. Chaz gets bashed, caught in a root solar beam. Raikou ducks over to reverse it, but Mara follows up with a cyclone. Chaz opts to trade Gladiator's Medallion. Cooldown's now being overlapped. Chaz continues to be interrupted and mistakes like this deeper into dampening are going to cost Method Black the match. Yeah, it's much more difficult to recover in a situation like that when you fall behind, but Chaz able to easily heal through the damage so far. Life Cocoon available, and that really is what we're going to be looking for. Chaz has that Life Cocoon. Someone on the team should be completely fine, but as Dampening gets higher, it becomes lower, and then Method Black is going to be a lot more scary for them. That last offensive push from Looney cost him a bit of mana, looking for those Cyclones. He does have Innervate. Morrow used his last one on Looney, allowing him to recover a little bit. And right now, Zipai and Morrow looking for some damage. Chaz in the midfield. Swapsy getting a little bit low. Looney still just kiting around the best he can, get caught in the fell eruption. And this is what we're going to be looking for from Raikou consistently in these games. Stun Looney, use Mana Rift, burn his mana. And it just puts wildcard gaming on a timer, especially if they can slow down the incoming drinks. Oh, Chaz getting hexed again. And this time during that way of the crane, big punish by Zipai. You can tell that wildcard gaming want to show their back in the tournament scene as they are assaulting the team of Method Black with complete dominance. They 3-0'd them earlier on in the tournament. They have a second chance here to come back in this best of seven, but they're falling behind due to critical mistakes. Swapsy is an open target now with into deep dampening territory with not many defensive options. He's currently lightning lassoed. Maro unable to combine any star surges with that though, so now he is starting to stabilize. Chaz trying to fake cast wind shear of Z-Pi, managing to do so. Looney finally being pressured here as Raikou tries to take the game into his own hands. Yeah, taking down Looney, he gets gripped back into the fight. Swapsy not letting him escape that easily. Looney in travel form, still looking to get away. Raikou throws in Gladiator's Maledict. I want to see Swapsy and Chaz help out as well. They need to be getting all three Maledicts out at the same time to try to push through some of those heals and actually land a kill. 
at this point in the game. Swapsy still a little low, caught in midfield. And we talked about how the Death Knight becomes more and more vulnerable in this matchup as it goes on, as his self healing will be reduced. And once that's reduced, and he has to actually run away from the battle, Method Black might end up losing a lot of pressure. But so far, Method Black, they're doing a great job. Looney's almost completely taxed on mana. And this game number one between these two t Titan teams is definitely going to matter. If Method Black can win this game, they have such a big advantage if it does end up going to a game seven. And I think that's what it might come down to. They have all the momentum right now. Method Black are battling it back here as Looney's tapped on mana. Maro is low on health and dampening is going higher and higher. Looney tries to escape, but Raikou continues to chase him down. Chaz activates Way of the Crane. They're looking to find a kill on Looney here and now. Are they going to be able to pull it off? Chaz Trinkets to find the kill. Looney denies it. Cyclone by Maro supporting Looney, but he's still caught into a stun. Maro is still being pressured by Swapsy. Looney has to heal two targets at 34% dampening with basically zero mana left in the tank, and he's still managing to do it. Swapsy now getting bursted down. Both teams race to the finish. Defensive overlap on both sides. This game is going to be ending shortly. Potential cross kill opportunity. Lightning Lasso immediately immediately broken out there by Swapsy. Cooldowns though are now available for him. He's ahead on the cooldowns, he's ahead on the momentum, but Chaz gets hexed. Zipai doing anything to try and keep his team going in this fight as we race down to the finish. Yeah, Innervate coming in from Maru onto Looney a little bit earlier on, allowed him to stabilize a little bit, but now with no mana left, Darkness gets dropped out. Raikou trying to assist Swapsy in this final push onto Maru at 38% dampening. Thorns does get used. Looney with the Iron Bark available quite soon. Can he get it off? Maro just needs to hold on for a little bit longer. Raikou trinkets out. They can't believe it. How is Maro still alive, but just sitting in bear form? They are not able to get out the counter pressure that they need. Looney with the iron bark looking to keep him alive, but I do not think it's going to be enough. Maro ultimately falls, and Method Black says, you know what? You're going to 3-0 us? Well, we got a surprise for you. They certainly do say just the safeguard is going to be that defensive utility that we see a lot of the time. If you ever see a little blue bubble go around anyone when they dip low on Health, that is going to be the shield provided by that defensive option. But now it is going to be an absolute fray. We got two melee cleaves going toe to toe here on Tolveron Arena. Yeah, Chaz seems to be the target of choice very early on for Wildcard Gaming. They're looking for an all in on Chaz. Barkskin and Iron Bark has been used. Blizzo committing the touch of death. One Maledict connects. Can they get back over onto Chaz? Ring of Peace gets dropped out by Blizzo. Chaz able to easily escape through that. And now, across the map, he should be completely fine. You were right, Bozo actually is going to be opting to run that disarm. All right, with Grapple Weapon, they can maybe potentially with Turbo Fist as well, parry a Death Strike and deny it long enough to get a kill with extended crowd control on Chaz. I, we really haven't seen anybody try to craft a strategy to completely negate Death Strike and kill a Death Knight early on. It's been most teams that are just saying, all right, we're going to play the long game. We're going to take a chill pill. We're just going to play max range and try and extend the game. But I really do think you can build compositions to burst down a Death Knight with specific talent builds. And Blizzo is trying to implement one of those currently here with the grapple weapon. However, I think his Arms Warrior still may have been a better pick. He can bring Disarm and Sharpen Blade and Stormbolt more frequently. I, I actually think they need to consider different options here and try to build compositions to counter the Death Knight, at least when they know they're running into it with the map and the comp pick advantage. Yeah, I actually wonder why a lot of these teams aren't choosing to implement the Arms Warrior. It is a lot of damage, very durable, like you said, has a lot of disruption. Blizzo, of course, grabbing that grapple weapon. He's had to give up his fortifying brew, so that means he's going to be more vulnerable as a target. He has the diffuse magic to remove Maledict. He has a touch of karma to survive, but without that fortifying brew, he is a solid option for Method Black in this game, and you can bet that they have realized that. Once again, Blizzo, Zipai, they're looking to take down Chaz, who's in bear form in midfield looking to try to kite away the best he can. Leaps behind the pillar, gets gripped back by Zipo, Zipai, sorry. But uh, Blizzo, unfortunately, with no cooldowns left, really vulnerable, gonna have to potentially run away during this moment. Swapsy and Raikou still all over him. Fist of Fear gonna be used out, try to get some counter pressure and keep himself alive. When Blizzo does use his Fist of Fear, that gives him 100% parry with the Honor Talent Turbo Fist. So it's a great defensive move for Windwalker Monks in addition to increasing the amount of damage they do. Yeah, I think Blizzo is doing an interesting decision here in game number two. They are against the wall, so they may need to try and experiment with a new uh, strategy. They are targeting Chaz in an all-in attempt. Is he actually going to fall to he this could. burst damage? Darkness gets traded, but he might get unlucky. He has a chance to be hit even with the protection of that purple cloud, but 
Fortunately for him, Chaz is always lucky. Manages to escape with one of his nine lives used there. Now cutting across the map, but grip back into the battle, able to jump down to safety. Blizzo gets swapped to here by Method Black as he's been a pressure point. We saw in North America that Windwalker in particular ended up being a really good target in these cleave mirror matches. Yeah, definitely susceptible to damage when you don't have Turbo Fist, Touch of Karma. Just gonna require Looney to toss out a lot of healing. Disarm used over onto Raikou once again, and I think that was just defensive. Grapple weapon, I'm not exactly sure how he wants to use it in this matchup. He can use it to deny a lot of the self-healing from both Swapsy and Raikou, but like we kind of talked about, it makes him more vulnerable of a target, and I think he could potentially be the most vulnerable target in this matchup anyways. In terms of mana, it seems like the pressure that Method Black has been able to put out, or sorry, Wildcard Gaming has been able to put out onto Chaz has put him a little bit behind, and you can see Looney, he's far away. He went for a drink, was able to regenerate just a little bit of mana, giving Wildcard Gaming a slight edge in that department as both Zipai and Blizzo continually train down Chaz, but I think Chaz is gonna be just fine. Yeah, Chaz has really only got to keep his mana, an eye on his mana. He can sneak away far away and go for a drink, but he doesn't have Darkness from Raikou to rely on to save the team while he does that, and his team will be exposed. Chaz getting gripped back into the fight, and Wildcard Gaming are mixing it up, trying to consistently go after the healer. We now see Method Black doing the same, and this may end up being a healer race at a certain point, although chasing down a Druid is quite a tall order to be able to accomplish and it is, does seem to be the case that they are not going to continue that attack instead now switching their attention back to Swapti, that grapple weapon taking his weapon away and denying death strike now turbo fist denying it further but still not enough damage to push Swapsy over i do really want to see one of these teams implement the retribution paladin arms warrior if they know what death knight is coming their way it's something that i think could be quite a hard counter to the death knight in particular and I'm very surprised that we have not seen experimented with, considering Method Black used that composition quite a lot last year. Yeah, Chaz looked for a drink, not able to find it. Now Looney and Chaz have actually evened out on mana. Interesting to see where Looney is right now. Blizzo tried to tank through some of this damage with the Touch of Karma. And that, I think, will ultimately allow Looney to regenerate. But no, Raikou was able to shut it down. Both these healers have not had a chance to drink in this matchup just yet. Grapple Weapon, once again, going to be used onto Swapsy. Blizzo ports away. Looney has to play catch up. Blizzo gets gripped back in, but with no defensive left. This is what we're talking about. Blizzo could be a very vulnerable target for Swapsy and Raikou. Put out a lot of pressure. You can see Wildcard Gaming. They're looking for Chaz. They could maybe take him down. He has the Bark Skin up. Iron Bark available, but he's caught into the stun. No darkness from Raikou for another three seconds. Can he survive? He gets knocked back in line of sight by Blizzo. Oh. Darkness gets traded out in the nick of time with Barkskin. And that will be enough to keep Chaz alive, but still, these swaps from Wildcard Gaming are so dangerous on Chaz. Two out of nine lives. I actually want to see if that ends up lining up with ten out of nine at some point in this game. I don't, I don't think it's going to. I think it's going to end much sooner than that. Looney now almost tapped on mana as both druids are even stepping foot into dampening, which is going to reduce the incoming healing of both teams. Now the Death Knights are a lot more susceptible to be taken out. Grapple weapon as Blizzo starts punching away. Turbo fists to parry the incoming death strikes as well. Swapsy feeling the pain of that talent build that Blizzo brought here in game number two. We do see an attack towards Chaz as well. Wildcard Gaming trying to create pressure in multiple points. Chaz preemptively activating Iron Bark and trying to retreat to safety, but he's also got Swapsy at low health who he needs to keep an eye on, and this is looking increasingly difficult for Method Black. Yeah, Raikou trying to once again land a mana rip onto Looney. Manages to find it, almost completely tapped on mana, but Swapsy's the one that's in most trouble. Zipa and Blizzo all over him. Chaz going to have to play catch up. Icebound Fortitude gets used by Swapsy, removing the stun and also preventing some incoming damage which he needs as Touch of Death has been used by Blizzo. That's the grapple weapon on Swapsy. No Death Strike going to be available for a few seconds as he looks to kite away. Death Pact has to be traded out. And now Swapsy with no, no defensive cooldowns is super vulnerable. Looney, though, with no mana left. Blizzo could fall. He uses the Fuse. He has a tough Chikarma, but after that, Wildcard Gaming, they got nothing left. Man, Blizzo has to trade both of those. Now Maledict is soaking up some heals as well. Looney has to expand even further, manage to dispel that off. And Method Black are battling back here in game number two, which would be a massive lead. They would have such a huge advantage for the rest of the series if they can manage to win on what is supposed to be Wildcard Gaming's counter pick. Looney's got three targets at low health. He does have Interrate, but he's caught in crowd control as Method Black look to take Blizzo out. Blizzo protects himself with that Ring of Peace, but they're closing. They've got him surrounded. There's nowhere 
somewhere for him to hide. Fist of Fury to try and parry some attacks here as this match may be closing shortly. Grapple Weapon in desperation to deny some of Raikou's damage as they switch targets and some attention to him. Trying to catch Chaz off guard, deep into dampening. This swap might be able to net them a kill here. Wildcard Gaming look to put a point on the board but get denied. Iron Bark starting to stabilize Raikou and now Method Black have the advantage. Yeah, and Blizzle's still in a lot of trouble. Looney looking for a drink here. If he was able to get some mana, could be good. Innervate usage needs to be good for Looney here. He uses Innervate. He can get basically free healing for a couple of seconds on the Blizzo and Z5. Blizzo once again kiting away, doing a good job, waiting for that touch of Karma. In 23 seconds, he's going to be feeling a lot more healthy, a lot more stable in this matchup. Chaz now honestly completely tapped on mana. Also, both these druids running out of time at 21% dampening. Grapple weapon now onto Raikou. And he does have his darkness coming up shortly. Time is just flying in this game. Yeah, at this point, 22% dampening. Both druids completely tapped on mana. Looney's actually got Innervate available, so he can make all of his spells free. That could be something that allows him to push forward and allow his team to get aggressive. Dampening getting higher and higher. Wildcard Gaming mixing it up, going after different targets. Method Black as well, creating pressure on Looney. Will he be able to survive? He ducks around the corner, but Raikou cannot be kited. Swapsy is impending doom for Looney here on game number two. Ring of Peace denies the reconnect. Looney crosses the map to safety, but now Blizzo stunned back behind the pillar. Looney Looney left him behind. Uh -oh. Maledict absorbing the heals. Touch of Karma sustains Blizzo for now. Both teams completely tapped. Dampening is not going anywhere, but up and up and up and up. And that healing is going to become so difficult for both teams to recover through. Grapple weapon now. Swaps can't death strike. He's in a bit of danger. Chaz is trying to keep two members of the team back up. I love the strategies implemented on both sides. Switching targets frequently is super effective against Restoration Druids. Swapsy falling further behind. Chaz doesn't have much. Darkness gets traded out, but he could get unlucky in that. He death grips him out of the safety of the darkness. They disable Rudum as well to hold him out of that defense just a second longer. Sick play by Wildcard Gaming. And we are going to see Wildcard Gaming bring it back with a, a composition. This win in the grand final. Best of seven all tied up. Wildcard Gaming versus Method Black. Yeah, Wildcard Gaming have good strategies in this series throughout Method Black in the entirety of the day. I think they've set themselves up well here on Ashamane's Fall with this Elemental Shaman Balanced Druid composition. Yeah, and Chaz is actually playing the Gnome, so I think he heard you super easy. <laughs> it's going to be super effective against that Balanced Druid, no longer susceptible to the Root Beam. And I think that gives Method Black even more of an edge in this matchup as they look to get uh, very aggressive early on onto z -Bi. Gets interrupted. That's the Astral Ship. Looney's still caught in the crowd control. They could force out Trinket Spirit Link. Looney has to Trinket out to connect some heals onto Zipai. And Zipai no longer has the safety net of those Restoration Druid Hots. If Looney gets caught into crowd control, both Morrow and Zipai could be in some trouble. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm sold on the Restoration Shaman from Looney. I think he's experimenting with it because he's seen the success of the Shamans in North America with their mana output into deep dampening. Raikou gets bursted really early on by Wildcard Gaming. Cyclone at low health opts to use Byer's Medallion to break out of that and allow Chaz to continue healing him back to full health. Good coordination there by Morrow and the Z-Pi with that Incarnation Stormkeeper. If they can coordinate attacks like that deeper into dampening, surely it will net them a kill. And that is going to be terrifying for Method Black, having seen this exchange so early on. Yeah, Life Cocoon gets traded out by Chaz once again, keeping Swapsy nice and healthy as they make a little bit of a swap over onto Looney, getting him low. And I want everyone at home to be paying attention to, to, paying attention to Chaz's positioning. Chaz is just trying to line of sight z as often as possible. Obviously, right now he's pushing in, but when he's in trouble and he needs to actually heal, his positioning has to be he's out of line of sight of z because that's really one of the only interrupts on the team that's really going to be threatening for him throughout the game. So if uh, Raikou and Swapsy are in trouble, they need to position themselves in a way where Chaz can actually get heals off because if he gets consistently interrupted like this, especially later on in the game, it's going to be very difficult. All right, Raikou getting cycloned up, not able to get any output rolling for his team. We see Maro activating his Innervate on Looney, so getting a couple of free heals there to try and effectively use his mana for a late game. Potential victory here against Method Black on game number three in the grand finals of the European Region Cup number two. Wildcard Gaming earlier in the day, 3 0 Method Black, and they were dominating them in both strategy and mechanics. Here in the grand finals, Method Black are showing that they've polished their plays and are ready to slay can they stay on target long enough to find a kill in the fray is a question and we're gonna find out pretty soon anyway
Yeah, we would definitely will find that out very soon, Sid. Uh, Swapsy now being caught into the lightning lasso. That's going to force out the anti-magic shell and life cocoon. And that is the safety net that the Mistweaver monk has. I keep talking about it because of how important it is. It's a really short cooldown, and that just allows basically a free reset on HP. And that's why it's sort of difficult to actually kill against the Mistweaver monk because they always have that as an option with how low the cooldown it is. You have to wait until it's not as powerful or get these extended crowd control chains onto the Mistweaver monk. But... Wildcard Gaming, they don't really have that as an option. Root Solar Beam was a great option, but now that he's playing Gnome, uh, they have a direct counter to that combination. Looney looking for a full hex. Chaz denies it with the Incapacitate, looking for some heals on Swapsy as he's caught into a Lightning Lasso once again. It's going to be really important. Raikou and Swapsy able to shut that down. Otherwise, they might get a little bit too low for Chaz to top them off and heal them up. The initial attack in this game by Wildcard Gaming netted them powerful cooldowns like Darkness, but that is now going to be available here shortly for Raikou, and that advantage that they build has been lost. But between these two top-tier teams, it is quite difficult to net a kill before dampening, so it is expected that this game will be continuing on for some time. Maru trying to set up some damage here, blocking Raikou down in a bash, but Raikou denies that kill window by imprisoning Maru, slowing down the pressure enough for Chaz to recover. Looney's mana not looking too good good and that's really the biggest risk that wildcard gaming has taken here in game three they experimented with the restoration jury version of this in game one and didn't find success so now looney is trying to look for a different option in terms of healers bringing in the shaman and hoping that it will be effective but i'm not entirely sold on it if he can't maintain his mana at a high level then into dampening when he wants to look for purges and dispels on enveloping and renewing mist from chaz's mist fever monk he just won't have the mana to do it if he can maintain his mana, bringing in Zipai as well for a double purge attack, it could be a way for Wildcard Gaming to get a victory. Looney then needs to try and look for drinks, but with an unholy death knight such as Swapsy, you can see his ghoul charging towards Looney. If that ghoul is attacking him, he is what is said in combat, and in combat you cannot drink. So Swapsy and Raikou and Chaz have crafted this melee cleave composition to be not only durable, but a drink denier, a very well-rounded choice by Method Black. However, they are exposed to crowd control, and we see the team of Wildcard Gaming trying to take advantage of that here by casting Hex on Chaz. You would then look to see a Root Solar Beam or a Cyclone or a Bash, which is now currently active with two seconds left there next to Chaz's frame. He can't heal whenever one of those boxes is next to his health. It means he's crowd controlled. In that position, he saw incoming crowd control and activated a defensive cooldown life cocoon that is currently glowing below his frame. That absorbed a huge hit onto Raikou and completely denied Wildcard Gaming's attack. Yep, Looney at 50% mana, 4% dampening. It becomes more and more difficult for both of these healers. Raikou taking a little bit of burst. Stormkeeper from Zipai looking for a lot of damage on Raikou. Double Maladix is going to be traded out. And that's what we see from these teams. Unless it's deep dampening, what they really need to be coordinating is these Maladix assaults. If they can continuously uh, build up those trinkets and use them in a coordinated assault, they might be able to actually take someone down a little bit earlier on than you would normally expect. Chaz now into a Solar Beam. Maru just using it as an interrupt at this point because going for the root solar beam doesn't really accomplish too much raikou caught into a stun as he moves forward to continue the damage and also get in line of sight of chaz zipai still on the elemental shaman very threatening with the wind shears as well as looney so if chaz is forced into a position where he doesn't have revival or life cocoon and everyone's in the midfield and zipai and looney are in line of sight that's when it gets really scary for the mistweaver monk and that's the situation that method black wants to try to avoid at all costs. It's really all about the healers deep in the dampening. How can they maintain their mana and then use it aggressively to push the team over in deep dampening and massive healing reduction? Chaz has higher mana and he can access an expensive ability called Way of the Crane, which boosts his damage enormously and also allows him to stabilize his team when his damage does healing as well. So Chaz with the lead will be able to access that more frequently and have more windows of opportunity. Whereas Looney is slowly but surely being tapped on his mana and he will not be able to access the ability per to dispel renewing and enveloping mist. So if we look at the game's current state in game number three, Method Black have a significant lead, although they need to take those windows of opportunity and execute on them. Chaz is the one who needs to be the initiator. He is the one that has to pick those moments to do it. If he picks the wrong one and they don't net a kill, it's going to cost him a, lo a lot of mana. If he does pick the right moment and net, then he's going to be able to net a kill. So everything rides on Chaz to be able to add an extra bit of damage to his team to find a kill here in game number number three. Looney needs to find some way to regenerate mana so he can access Purge. Otherwise, it's looking like curtains for wildcard gaming in game number three. Yeah, it is difficult. And I think with the way this series has been playing out, this series, in addition to the last time these two teams met a little bit earlier on today, 
I think both of them are still experimenting. They're both trying to figure out the patch. I know Rich asked me if these teams know exactly what's going on just yet. And I mean, this series would make me basically assume no. They're still trying to figure out what compositions are best. I feel like Wildcard Gaming, they realize potentially the rest of Druid isn't the best. Now they have to bring in the rest of Shaman, but I just don't know how well it's actually working out for them. Looney's mana has been doing better on the rest of Shaman, but I still think later on in the game, Method Black will have that edge. Marl's going to be taking a lot of damage. Looney, once he has to start spam casting heals, it's going to be difficult for him to keep Marl alive for much longer with no trinket. One more good co crowd control chain coming in from Method Black could actually close out the game. Chaz is sitting very far away, able to easily heal through this damage so far, throwing out a life cocoon as well. And you can see Raikou, he still has the darkness. Swapsy actually not even opting to play anti-magic zone, realizing they potentially don't need it, just wanting a little bit more offense in this matchup. Morrow taking some damage. Looney gets gripped in as well. And if Swapsy and Looney can continuously grip in Looney, get these mana rifts, get some damage rolling on him, it's going to tax his mana even further. I mean, Method Black are securing more and more of an advantage here in game number three as Dampening ramps up to critical mass. It's going to be up to Z-Pi to try and close this fight out. He's got good crowd control at this moment in time, hexing up the healer Chaz, stunning Raikou, denying both from being able to retreat away and heal each other. Good solar beam locking Chaz out on cast and deep in Dampening. Death Knights then become the target for these teams, but even still, it's Maru who is still on the back foot. Looney's a couple seconds away from that Gladiator's Medallion with two more left. Now Spearling Totem may need to be required. He's desperately trying to hold on to that for a more dire situation down the pipe here, and he's managed to hold on. However, still costing him quite a bit of mana. Lightning Lasso onto Swapsy. He is slowly but surely uh -oh. becoming a liability here in Dampening. Chaz gets interrupted. Chaz has not been trying to find any sort of opportunity. He's really holding out for one big push, but if he's just never able to find a moment to attack, I'm not sure if his team has enough damage to close the game. Yeah, Life Cocoon was so much smaller there for Chaz now at 30% dampening that shield. You can't really rely on it as much. And it becomes really scary for the Mistweaver Monk. Now Chaz into the full hex. He has Trinket, but really no heals to keep Swapsy alive just yet. Darkness has to be uh -huh. traded out. Swapsy trying to take down Morrow, Looney trades out the Spirit Link, and now both of these healers really struggling to keep their teams alive. Lightning Lasso now on to Swapsy. How is Chaz going to handle this situation? Cap Totem on to him. Doesn't have Revival. Might have to actually activate the Way of the Crane to keep his team stable and push over Morrow. But Morrow with the Bar Skin still feeling relatively healthy. Looney has the Earthen Shield Totem as well. Wildcard Gaming still has a few tools left to survive, but it's not looking too good. There's the way of the crane from Chaz. This is supposed to be the additional punch that his team needs, but he wasn't really able to get any sort of pressure out with that, and that just cost him a tad bit of mana. However, for Mystery Monks, they can pair up Mana T with Way of the Crane, reducing its cost by half. Swapsy still just getting slaughtered here into deep dampening land. Morrow now getting reversed on. He's caught into a fell eruption. Off to use Glyre's Medallion to break out and try and avoid the fight, but he's not able to get out of there just yet. The Abomination has been brought into the battlefield as Swapsy looks to take this game for his team. Tons of damage. Looney with not many answers left. Multiple interrupts. One has been secured. Swapsy carrying the team. Another interrupt onto Looney will easily close this fight. Imprison prevents the incoming healing. Morrow struggles to just stay alive. Double stun nailed in and Method Black close it out here on game three and take the lead. Pew Pew, what it do? That's going to be number two. Bok Bok, Wild Card Gaming versus Method Black. Who is going to be able to take this one? If Method wins here, they are on match point. Let's hope that Wild Card Gaming don't choke on the chicken here in game number four or Method Black will advance forward to match point. Raikou securing crowd control on Looney early on and gunning down z as a priority target. Blizzo is still running that grapple weapon whenever you see that icon next to Swapsy's frame. Any box next to a health is crowd control and it denies the player's ability to interact in the match and will be an opportunity to net a kill. We do actually see the Druids as the targets whoa, early whoa, whoa, on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Tons of damage here from Blizzo. Touch of death explodes, dealing devastation, but Chaz does not panic and this is exactly why he wanted that Druid. He wants something that he's the most comfortable with to deal with that stress. I mean, he didn't panic, but he also used Trinket and Bark Skin, so he's going to be feeling not that confident going into the next stun. Unfortunately, Chaz now using Iron Bark preemptively before the stun. Looney in a lot of trouble as well. It could just be an outright healer race in this matchup, not necessarily about mana, but which Druid 
rotates through their defensive cooldowns better. Right now, Looney's in a massive lead with his trinket, but Chaz, he has the darkness from Raikou to fall back on. Darkness drops a little purple circle on the ground. That's going to be immuning most incoming damage onto Chaz, and that's a big safety net that Matt the Black has. Yeah. At this point, Looney is actually behind on mana. It's very difficult on hook point to drink as it's such a small map. You can't get the distance you need. Both teams have death knights, so they both have ghouls that can chase down the opposing healers and keep them in combat, which then denies drinking. Looney gets gripped into the fight. Method Black trying to start something here, but not finding too much damage off the back of that death grip. Looney makes a quick getaway with that Ursul's Vortex. It seems like they still want to try and chase him. Swapsy unable to stay on target. Raikou imprisons Looney, so Swapsy can move closer potentially, or maybe split his damage. We have seen Raikou and Swapsy often go after their own targets rather than intervening on the same one. This can cause a Restoration Druid to overextend his mana, having to expend multiple rejuvenations onto the entire team. Grapple Weapon was used here onto Raikou to deny damage. However, I feel the grapple weapon and leg sweep should just be used at the same time together one by one on Swapsy to deny death strike for an extended period of time and try and burst him down i, I still haven't seen blizzo implement that strategy death gri death grip the healer in shaz stun the entire team then grapple weapon Swapsy out paralysis chaz perhaps at the end of the stun something along these lines the crowd control from wildcard gaming definitely could be better their damage is there yeah chaz getting low bark skin will it be enough Ring of Peace gets dropped out by Blizzo, but unfortunately that was very misplaced and Chaz was able to easily escape, but points for the effort there on Blizzo as he does reconnect to Chaz. Can Zipai get there as well? And actually, Swapsy in this match, he's playing Gnome, so wants to have a little bit more uptime in this matchup, get out of the Chains of Ice to chase down someone if he necessarily needs to. Touch of Death now on Chaz as he's looking to kite away. Iron Bark was used. No Trinket, no Iron Bark, no Bark Skin for Chaz. Still such a vulnerable target. Looney falling behind on mana, though, as Swapsy looks to continue the pressure and force him in the situation where he's continuously using his mana and eventually it will run out. Blizzard on 50% health as well. Could be a vulnerable swap target. And I think that Method Black, they have an opportunity in this match to put pressure all over the place. I like the swaps on the Looney, but make sure you're doing as much consistent damage to Blizzo and Zipai as possible. All right, everybody tuning in here for the grand final in the European region. We've got a best of seven ahead of ourselves. More games to be had. You don't want to go anywhere as these teams are so evenly matched in not only mechanical skill, but also class and composition diversity. Method Black are two wins away from taking this, but of course, wildcard gaming earlier in the day 3-0'd method black so this is actually surprising method black have improved so drastically just in this single tournament looney on the ropes here with pressure mounting with swapsy on target able to connect a ton of damage looney overextends his defensive lineup overexpends his mana and now method black have a lead yep that is a significant lead as well looney really with not too much left Swapsy and Raikou, they need to focus on damage as much as possible. Really tax Looney as he just caught into the asphyxiate stun. Full life sweep on Chaz. There's still potential here for wild card gaming. Although they're behind on mana, they might be able to just take down Chaz outright. Iron Bark was used to deflect that attack. Bark skin available. So if he gets caught in a stun, although he doesn't have Trinket, he will be able to activate that damage reduction with Bark skin. Chaz going to have to be in bear form as well if he really wants to limit the damage that they're able to do. And Looney, although he's sneaking away and looking for drinks in this matchup, it's just really difficult. It's such a small map. Demon Hunter with so much mobility, able to easily shut that down. All you have to do, use a dash over, throw a glaive, and all of a sudden Looney is just wasting his time looking for those drinks. But maybe something that definitely ends up mattering a lot in this matchup. Chaz now under fire. Touch of death. Tons of damage. Blizzard wants this game and to tie it up here in the best of seven grand finals. Touch death about to explode dealing tons of damage swaps he gets stunned stunned on the trinket by z -Pi. huge pressure chaz barely clinging to life jumping into another stun as looney looks to try and secure the match for his team ursul's vortex pulling chaz back in the fight chaz hangs on now z -Pi falling behind mana is completely tapped on the side of wildcard gaming chaz still has a bit left in the tank he manages to make it out alive oh, but that's three out of nine of chaz's lives in this tournament here today blizzo gets bursted looney still has nothing and method black are looking to put wildcard gaming on match points they cannot believe that chaz is still alive and blizzo ultimately falls 
Method Black showing dominance. Such a close call, but managed to stay calm. But we've seen the tables be turned on Dollar and Sewers. Are we going to see this house of cards come crashing down? Looney is going to have to certainly be wiggly and jiggly to escape the attacks of this team as he is expected to be the target. We've seen Shaman's Grip stunned and trained for most of the day. Looney predicted this attack and already had Earthen Wall Totem placed down. Good plays, but they're continuing to gun for him, and it's match point. Yeah, Looney's going to be able to escape right now. We talked about the spirit or the strength of that pack spirit for the restoration shaman. But Looney already trading out his astral shift. Now Z Fi in a little bit of trouble, trading out AMZ, great anti magic shell. Looney now having to play catch up, looking for some healing waves. Nice stun there by Blizzo as they're looking to get some damage rolling on to Swapsy. Chad's fan is doing quite well so far. Looney able to kite away in that Ghost Wolf. Raikou needs to reconnect. Lands a Mana Rift, burning a little bit more of Looney's mana. And as the game goes on, those Mana Rifts really add up. All right, Looney on the run. That puppy NASCAR going to be running laps here on Dalaran Sewers. We see Grapple Weapon selected again for Blizzo, however, used onto Raikou instead to deny damage. I still would really like to see them go for a committed attack towards Swapsy. Instead, they're going after Chaz. It might be a healer race. Chaz is really disrespecting the damage here from Wildcard Gaming, not making any sort of cooldown trades. In the meantime, Looney got caught in stun and opted to use Glider's Medallion to dodge Mana Rift and avoid its mechanics so he can maintain his mana just a tad bit longer. Ursul's Vortex pulling Z-Pi downstairs. Really good placement on that Tornado, allowing Chaz to easily get away. Zipai is still marching his way across the fight, attacking Swapsy and Raikou on his way over. And that is important as a melee class that if you want to attack the enemy healer, if he gets away from you, attack somebody else while moving your character to the healer. Don't just simply target the healer and run at him. So he is maximizing his damage. Now Chaz finally being connected onto by two members trying to wild charge the safety grip back into the fight. He had a close call on hook point. He's dipping low in this position as well, just unable to escape. Is Chaz going to be able to escape? I don't know. That's definitely a good question. Ironbark does get used. Still trying to get behind the pillar, but Zipai and Blizzo relentless. Chaz barely hanging on. Darkness has to get traded out by Raikou to keep him alive. Chaz, after that, it is going to be a nightmare situation. Looney getting gripped in. Mana Rift lands, but Looney's doing quite well on mana. It doesn't matter. If they can get another stand, a stun on Chaz before Barskin comes up, Chaz is going to be a lot of trouble. 15 seconds. Can z -Pi make it to Chaz? 10 seconds. Nine seconds, Zipai making his way over. Potentially, Looney goes for some purges here. Four seconds, they're gonna lose that window of opportunity. Two seconds, and now Chaz has defense that he can trade for an attack, but the pressure has been mounting significantly. Raikou continually going after these mana rifts, but we saw it uh, currently now, though, uh, before I go into that, Chaz being attacked in a stun, a dangerous moment for him and his team. Looney opting to not go for any purges, doesn't want to expend that mana just yet. Maybe deeper into dampening, he will look to make that move. Ring of Peace knocking Chaz back into z -Pi's clutches as Blizzo's got Touch of Death rolling and about to explode gigantic damage, but Blizzo now in reversal. Pressure put on, and the trade has to be made. Looney's Spirit Link Totem, a vital defensive cooldown to keep Blizzo aggressive, and it does seem to be the case that they just want to run Chaz over. Can Chaz stay alive and secure his team a tournament victory, or will he fall to the pressure it looks like he's cracking he's hanging on by a thread but ultimately wild card gaming take him out here and stay in the tournament two more wins on their part and they can take this entire thing hard gaming can extend it all the way to a game seven but they have to watch out because method black is going to try to close yeah we've seen it all in this series so far wizards versus wizards melee versus melee but it all comes down to potentially this game for Method Black. Wildcard Gaming looking to claim this game and stay in this tournament. If Method Black can win this series on their map and compositional advantage, they will claim the second cup in a row. And even if they don't, they've still got another map left in the pool. We could quite easily go to a Game 7 Grand Finals here in the European region. Let's see who ends up coming out ahead. I do think Method Black have set themselves up for success, bringing in the balanced Druid here on Ruins of Lordaeron can rain down devastation with these incarnation star surges. Waz currently activating that and gunning down for Morrow. 
Looney easily deflecting it though. Now Morrow activating Icy Veins with an Ebon Bolt being channeled towards Waz, but he predicted the attack, got into bear form and reduced a significant amount of its damage. Good reaction time, but now Morrow switches his attention to Swapsy. Chaz has to respond to deny that kill with Iron Bark. Now Wildcard Gaming make another switch over. Now we can see Swapsy and Waz both being pressured. It does appear to be that Wildcard Gaming are just a tad bit more coordinated here in game number six. I do believe of this best of seven finals. Yep, it is game number six. I can count. Two and three. Six is pretty you high. You weren't confident in your math there. I mean, I'm a musician. I only go up to four normally, so six is pretty tough. All right, that's a lot of fingers and toes. I do agree. Waz now caught into a lightning lasso. Good burst here by Zipai. Morrow doesn't really have any follow-up damage just yet. Waz going to be retreating onto this tomb, and that's one little advantage that they have is they can sort of weave in and out on this tomb. Morrow's not going to be able to channel out the frost bolts quite as easily, but with the blizzard drop down, everyone will be snared for um, Wildcard Gaming on Method Black, and that's an opportunity for them to get out a little bit more damage. That's one thing that might be a factor as this game plays out. And they do expect this game to be playing out into dampening, and at that point, it could come down to just a couple of critical whoa, 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 whoa. Huge damage. Looney gets swapped to. It's match point. The pressure is on. Multiple maledicts committed as Looney escapes around the center pillar to safety, but a close call nonetheless. Yeah, that was a scary moment for Looney having to use his bark skin iron and iron bark. Gladiator safeguard going to be procking as well, so if they can get another swap like that, uh, I think they might be able to take Looney down, but I think now that Looney realizes he's such a vulnerable target, Morrow and Zipai are going to have to help him out a little bit sooner, stopping the Lightning Lasso from Swapsy, which is really the ability that set up that tremendous amount of damage onto Looney. Ooh, the reversal Lightning Lasso there by Swapsy, trying to mix things up. Mana advantage right now for Wildcard Gaming. We have not seen these compositions go head-to-head -head with the recent mana changes, so we will be finding out who actually gets the edge here pretty soon. Swapsy taking the brunt of this exchange. Windshear actually landed on the Chaz, interrupting his heels and forcing an astral shift from Swapsy. Big attack here for Wildcard Gaming. Big objectives forced. Nice Cyclone timing as well. Wildcard Gaming are definitely on point, looking to stay alive in this finals. Uh, big burst on Swapsy as he's looking to retreat behind the pillar with no astral shift still vulnerable Chaz keeping him alive with that preemptive iron bark and Looney surprisingly ahead on mana which I didn't necessarily expect I thought the moonkin damage would be superior to the frost mage damage and that means that Looney would have less mana but ultimately Chaz has had to use way more I think it's just the target selection from wildcard gaming they're doing significant bursts on multiple targets and that's really forcing Chaz to tax his mana Right now, Chaz looking for a drink, unfortunately not able to find it. Waz with his incarnation up, trying to get aggressive here. Looney charging in right now, trying to slow down Chaz, manages to find it. Waz sort of caught all alone in this frozen orb, in this blizzard. Now Looney in center field. Waz and Swapsy turning their attention onto him. Yeah, Looney is exposed as he tried to push forward and deny Chaz's drink. Anytime these healers push out in the center field, you can almost certainly expect the teams to switch their attention and turret a ton of damage towards them. Looney now positioned far on the back line. z moving in to try and maybe push back anyone denying him, but he's not able to actually escape and find that drink opportunity. Chaz now off screen to the right, I do believe, is sneaking away for a drink of his own potentially, but at the same time, Swapsy is exposed three seconds away from that astral shift, ducking around the corner, catching a couple of healing surges and starting to re-stabilize as we are in the finals. Method Black are on match point. Everything on the line right now for Wild Card Gaming. They dominated Method Black earlier in the day, but now that Method Black have learned and evolved, they have now shown that they are more than capable of taking down Wild Card Gaming, so it is now up to them to step up to the next level. Yeah, they just need to make sure they're executing with their strategies. Marl with a nice ray of frost on Swapsy. Swapsy trying to respond to the Stormkeeper, but gets interrupted. Marl been doing a good job making sure he gets out consistent pressure in this matchup. Veins has already been used, not going to be available for another two minutes. Looney and Chaz have sort of equalized on man at this point. Chaz snuck away for a drink, which is going to be important in this matchup. If they can get out of combat, these Restoration Druids can use drink, which will eventually start regenerating their mana after five seconds and give them a huge lead. And that's what some of these games do come down to today. When your healer's out of mana, he can no longer use spells to keep you alive. And that is the objective for both teams to make sure that they are taxing that man as quickly as possible. Now at 4% dampening, things are going to get a little bit more interesting in this matchup.
as uh, it becomes more difficult for these healers to keep their party members alive. Chaz starts off dampening with a significant lead, and that is great for his team as they just want to close this out and take a quick 4-2 against Wildcard Gaming. If they can maintain that lead moving forward, it definitely will do so. But now Zipai gets Whoa. bursted, Looney gets interrupted. Zipai ducks around the corner quickly to try and catch a heal, but even still struggling to stabilize. And now Method Black can switch their attention to Morrow, who's still exposed in center field. I would like to see them go after him. He blinks back to Looney at the side cart in that puddle of goo. But I think on that side of the map, it's not advantageous. There's not enough points of line of sight. I think the tombstones on the left side is a much better place to play. Looney's repositioned now over there, but he gets caught in that lightning lasso. Barkskin, is it going to be enough? It does appear to be the case with Zipai's support on those healing surges. Looney gets out alive. Yeah, Chas went for a drink once again. And uh, that is just not the spot you want to be in for Wildcard Gaming. Looney's falling further and further behind in this matchup. And I really like what Method Black is doing, making these swaps on the Looney really taxes them, forcing Morrow and Seapai to come back and assist them as often as possible. And that allows Chaz a moment of breathing where he can actually go and escape and look for some drinks. See Morrow trying to defend Looney in this matchup as he moves towards the starting room, but not going for a drink. zipai has been left behind. Looney has to make sure he's healing everyone up. Waz and Swapity have so much pressure. All three members from Wildcard Gaming falling apart. Their team is just getting destroyed here in this match. Looney has to play catch up. He has the innervate up, which is going to be really important. He wants to take advantage of that innervate, but that lightning lasso and purge from Swaps, he will completely deny Looney getting those heals off. We normally expect Waz to save the day on Rogue, but here he's bringing out that balanced Druid to try and knock Wildcard Gaming out of the competition and secure a first place finish. Can Waz deliver enough damage to find victory? We're going to be finding out here quite soon with Dampening ramping up to critical mass at 17%. Both Druids slowly draining themselves out of mana, a resource they require to cast healing spells and save their teammates. Looney currently caught in a stun lock combination as Method Black go for the healer throat, but now getting caught over extended. Waz is getting bursted and potentially going down here. Are we going to a game seven? No. Waz saves, stays alive. Looney now in trouble. Uh -oh. Tons of damage flying in as he runs around the corner. Manages to stay in it, but now Maro gets swapped to and Zipai gets swapped to this is where the damage over time effects of Waz and Swapsy really start to sink in. Those rejuvenations cannot simply counteract those damage over time effects, and Looney will have to expend huge amounts, amounts of mana just simply to recover. Yeah, Zipai still low, and with no Iron Bark, he might have to use the Astral Shift. Cyclone gets traded out by Waz. Nicely done. Good control in the game so far. 22% dampening. Looney almost completely tapped on mana. Chaz way ahead. Things are looking better and better for Method Black in this matchup. They need some semblance of counter pressure here on Waz. He did have to use his Bark Skin, but he gets topped off quite easily by Chaz. Looney still trying to escape, but Swapsy just does such a good job on that Elemental Shaman, making sure he's harassing the healer as often as possible, making sure he gets damaged, he's not allowed to escape for drinks, then finds the Lightning Lasso onto Zipai, pressuring him down a little bit. Now Chaz falling a little bit behind onto Swapsy. He gets low, Looney looking for a drink, and this is such a pivotal point in the matchup. If Looney can get a lot of mana here, this is gonna put Wildcard Gaming back in the match. Unfortunately, not able to completely reset his mana, but did find enough keep his team alive a little bit longer. Looney ties the mana battle, but the pressure is still in favor of Method Black as dampening gets higher and higher. Cross crowd control initiation by Method Black as they look to close this match out. Zipai is limited on defensive options, gets solar beamed on that lightning lasso. His only opportunity gets taken out of the match. Looney is still crowd controlled. Iron Bark is the only thing that stands between his team winning and losing this match right now, and it appears to be just enough defense for Zipai to stay alive, but all three Three members are slowly getting whittled down. There's really no sign of counter pressure anytime soon for Wildcard Gaming. Morrow drops that Frozen Orb, but it's more so just to hold Waz and Swapsy in place so they don't ultimately go down. Morrow makes the play, blinks into center field, tries to burst down Waz. Waz does not get cut off guard, makes a good trade and stays alive. Now Method Black simply just need to push forward and end this. Yeah, Zipai with the Astral Shift trying to deny Method Black the opportunity to win the game. Waz with his bear form and his bark skin, as well as his safeguard, managed to survive that last attempt. But now a clear opening, especially with Morrow having the icy veins up shortly. Waz could be very vulnerable here. Chaz sitting down for a drink. How much mana is he going to get? Wildcard Gaming, you have to stop him. But Swapsy's low. They may have sat down for the drink way too long. Swapsy's trying to stay alive with the Astral Shift. Chaz got about 50% mana back 
but he has to catch Polymorph. Up. That's a full Polymorph. Maro, beautifully done. Chas trinkets out into the full poly. Swapsy trying to hold on a little bit longer. Another Polymorph on Chas into the capstone. Do they have the damage to take Swapsy down on game number six? Swapsy manages to stay alive. A Cyclone coming in from Looney. Swapsy running for his life, trying to survive. Chas connects the Iron Bark. That's the only thing allowing him to survive, but still good burst damage. Maro with a beautiful counter spell. Nice Cyclone coming in from Looney. Beautiful control from wildcard gaming are they going to be able to finally take swapsy down wildcard gaming are putting together the pieces of what i thought was the unsolvable puzzle swapsy has just been against the wall for the last couple seconds of this match as he tries to reverse some pressure on his Whoa, e and I closes it out tons of damage from waz in that incarnation waz carrying at a critical point in the game and taking the tournament to make such quick work of method black just two series ago a 3-0 method black then goes they body we were here and while they're doing that they're taking notes they look at what happened in that series against wildcard gaming and they come back with vengeance they're able to take them down four to two wildcard gaming though looks phenomenal throughout the entirety of the series you see it in that game as well they were so close to being able to actually extend it all the way to the game seven and that's why you're going to see wildcard